You know, in the last few weeks, we've talked about visions and dreams and so forth. Now, a lot of times when we have a vision and dream, we don't really see them happening. And sometimes when we have visions and dreams, it seems like there seems like complications come in that we just kind of we kind of lose the sight of our vision and dreams mm -hmm. because Satan will try to come in or our, even our own thoughts because we do not see it. We lose the visions and dreams. We do not see the vision and dreams. And so if it's not happening right now, we have a tendency of knowing, hey, really, is it God's will? Or And we start thinking, well, did I really receive this vision? Is the vision that I have or the dreams I have, are they reality? Wow. And we kind of get to the point that we can get down on ourselves because we walk by sight and not by faith. So we need wow. to learn to walk in the spirit even with our dreams. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to turn, turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. And we see this is where Paul and Silas was on their, their uh, missionary uh, trip. They were on their missionary trip. And they had things in their mind that they're going to go and witness to about Jesus and so forth like this. Now, we see that they were told not to go to Asia because they would come into a lot of problems. So in verse 9, in verse 9, i got to get to the chapter here. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 16. They are already been told not to go to Asia because they will not be able to be received there. Wow. But in verse 9, it says, A vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. So he had a new vision that was given to him to come to Macedonia and help us. And he had that vision. Now we figure that, you know, that vision is coming from God. This is the vision that he had. So it should be very easy. Well, let's look at verse 15. Uh, let's look at 14. Okay, let's go back to 13. And it says, on the Sabbath, we went out of the city over by the riverside where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the women and resorted thither. A certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she tended unto the things which Paul spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, she sought, besought us, saying, if we have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Now we think, well, that's the reason why he was called. All of a sudden he came. He was able to be witness to Lydia, a woman of influence. She's a woman that was a seller of purple and so forth, which was uh, one of the most expensive things that you could even buy. So she was a wealthy woman. But not only that, she, heard, she, she was a Jew, but then she finally heard the word of God and, the, and about Jesus, and she accepted in her whole household. Now we would think, well, that'd be the end of that. That would be, that was his vision. He was going to go talk to people. He was going to win people to Christ. And, we, you know, most of us would have been satisfied with just that because we see one person and the whole household gets saved. But the vision continued. But then there's a complication. And we see in verse 
um, 16. In verse 16, And it came to pass, and he went to prayer, and a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which sought her masters much gain by soothing, soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Mm. Well, that sounds, it's kind of, we think, wait a minute, this woman was demon possessed, and then she's proclaiming that these people were men of God. Wow. We say, well, but this doesn't, doesn't quite work. Doesn't seem like right. But then, mm, verse, the same followed Paul and us and cried, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, he was upset. This woman kept following him around, yeah. just counted him, and keep saying wow. this over and over. Wow. And Finally, he turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And she came out the same hour. Oh. Well, oh. That was, well, that's another reason why I'm sent there. That's another a woman that was possessed. I'm able to set her free. She came oh. to the knowledge of Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Amen. we understand verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of the gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceed trouble as us, our city, wow. mm. and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Well, we see, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here he had a vision. Here was a thing that was coming about. The woman was set free. And you think, well, that was good. The vision's coming about. Lord. I'm going out to share Jesus with her. The mm. woman is set free. But Satan in his wiles and his schemes yeah. used this. Mm. Used this. Even though that woman was set free, nah. it rose up so to cause trouble and the gospel mm. that Paul was preaching. Nah. See, Satan will use things that appear good for evil. Mm. And so what he did... What happened in verse 22, and the, and the multitude rose together against them, and the magistrate rent off their clothes and continued to beat them. Mm, and when they laid many stripes upon them, they cast them in a prison and charged the jailer to keep them safely. Yes. Well, again, when we're going through what the Lord has placed on us and dreams and visions, sometimes there will be complications and Satan does not want you to be able to continue wow. your vision. He did not wow. want them to keep ministering. So he could even use one person that was demon possessed to get saved wow. to rile up the rest of the crowd mm -hmm. against them mm -hmm. so he could short stop any mm -hmm. more things to happen mm -hmm. to cut the gospel to be shared any further so we see here Paul and Silas were thrown into prison and it goes on and it says mm -mm -mm. And who received a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in stocks. Mm. So, otherwise, what was they doing? They were binding them. They were putting them in prison. 
putting them in stocks so their ministry, their, their vision, yes. their dreams could not come about. Wow. See, that's what happens to us in life, mm. that complications will come into our life <coughs> will come into our life to keep us from moving forward, to get us discouraged. Wow. So we just say, well, Lord, I've seen part of my vision come about. I've seen part of my dreams come about. But why I, now I'm being attacked? Maybe I didn't hear from you at all. Maybe my dreams are not reality. Maybe they're not this. Well, we look at this and we go on and it says, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang, and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them. Wow. They're in prison and they were praying and praising even though they were in prison and they were in stocks and they were bound, their vision was still going out because they were witnessing through their praises and their prayers to the other prisoners. See, a lot of times when we're going through things and hardships in life, we will say, why, why, why? I, I must have missed it. I just this. But see, they were content. They were content. And they got into praise and prayer. And then, verse 26 says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So the foundation, the prisons were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. It didn't say just Paul and Silas's bands. It said the whole prison, everybody's bands were wow. loosed. So again, their vision to witness and their vision to go and share Jesus, their consistency with their prayer and praise Cause a move of God, just almost like with Jesus at his crucifixion, mm -hmm. that the earthquake came that loosed up all the graves and people went out. Yeah. This is the same power, the same power of the Holy Spirit that raised mm -hmm. Christ from the dead is the same spirit that is working mm -hmm. here. So we see, and the keeper, verse 27, and the keeper of the prison waking out of his sleep, Seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing the prisoners had been fled. Not only that it caused turmoil in him, but it also caused turmoil in the, the prison guard. Nah, nah. I mean, he was upset. He was fearful. But we see mm -hmm. that Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Boy. Then he called for a light mm. and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Mm. Boy. Then Paul's vision and dreams keep multiplying, keep multiplying. What was his vision and dream? Was to go and witness to the Gentiles. To go and be a witness. And so we see again, it says, the guy came, brought them out, and says, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Yeah. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of night and washed their stripes and baptized and was baptized. And he and all his straight forth. And when he brought them into his house, set a meal before them and rejoiced, believing in God. And all their house. So again, 
The vision, the dream that Paul had was continued. It might have been some adversity that happened. But Paul and Silas was a little bit like Jesus here. When Jesus was bought, brought before Pilate, he didn't say a word. Mm. Paul and Silas could have said, wait a minute, I am a Roman citizen. Mm. I'm a Roman citizen. He could have got out of this mm. and just went his merry way. But Because Roman citizens were not, not allowed to be beaten. They weren't allowed to be beaten. So he, in just total, total submission to his dream and to his vision of winning and taking the message of Jesus Christ. Lord. No matter what complications he went through, no matter that the devil tried to shortstop him, not having that damsel saved because it riled up the crowd the Gentiles to have him thrown into prison Mm -hmm. but we go back and we go back to verse 25 and 26 it says at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard him And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So when we look at things, that when we have visions, and to put it on ourselves, when we have visions or we have a dream, does not mean that everything is going to go smoothly for it to happen. We need to be committed to that vision and dream the Lord has put upon us. No matter what happens, we keep holding on to that dream. We keep holding on to those visions the Lord has planted into each one of us. we got to keep holding. If we look at sight and look at things that happens to us on the way to vision, if we do not count the cost to what the vision that we have to go through, it will never happen. We do not count to the dreams that what we will go through that happens. So what we need to do is when you have a vision or you have a dream that is planted into your heart and things start to come against you, just like Paul and Silas that were stuck in that prison, they were bound, they were just totally bound, and they were just... they. Uh, that they what did they do? They prayed and right. praised. Right. So when we're going through the complications in our lives, and we, we see the adversity going into our lives right. that interrupt interrupt our dreams and visions, mm-hmm. we need to be still committed to that dream, still committed to that vision. Stay committed to it. And when we're going through complications, when we are bound by things that men might do to us, when we are bound, what Satan is trying to stifle us, Mm -hmm. that that is the call that we get into worship and get into praise and get into prayer. And then when we get into that, what happens? Suddenly, those bounds are loose from us. Yes, Those bands are loose yes. from us. Those chains are loose from us. Because we keep the vision alive. We keep the dream alive. We do not let circumstances of this earth, circumstances of people, circumstances that people try to do to us, things that we have no control over sometimes, we do not let them take our dream or vision away. And when we do it and we get into the praise, the Lord will suddenly cause that earthquake to break all those bands, all those chains that has kept us stifled. Kept us stifled. 
You know, there are so many bands that we have, and a lot of the bands is, is our thought pattern. You know, well, we can't do this because we don't have this, or we don't have we don't have enough people, or we don't have enough money. We just don't have. We don't have. Well, God says, keep that vision. Get into prayer and praise. And when your heart really gets involved in the praise and prayer, suddenly the Lord will give that earthquake and shake the foundations that are trying to hold us bound. Shake those foundations. And a lot of the foundations, I'll be honest with you, is our own self-talk, our own belief, faulty belief systems that are in us. Mm. The things that we have been taught that are totally wrong, that are totally against the truth of God. And we have to say, Lord, and we just praise Him for what He has said and praise Him for the truth. And we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. And keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. So those, that yoke of bondage, those things that keep us being stifled, the things that keep us from living that dream or living that vision that's been placed in us that we know in our knower that the Lord told us the Lord in our know has put it in our heart that it's going to happen. Lord. And when we come against complications, you know, when we come against things in our life, the key issue is to keep on living that dream, mm. keep living that vision, keep it before us, walk by faith and not by sight. Just mm. keep on walking. Keep on doing what you're called to do. Don't give up. Don't give up. It is easy to give up. I can sit here and the devil just wrestles with me. Well, you don't have a lot of people here. Don't give up. You know, it's just like my brother-in-law says, you might not have a lot of people, but you touch so many people around the world. You know, one of my last sermons, I had 40 few, 41 views on that one sermon. I'd love to have 41 people here to hear. But I'm going to keep that vision alive. It's going to happen. God. It's going to happen. Thank you, God. So we see that the Lord wants you and wants us, in spite of all complications in life, yeah. things that try to keep and destroy our dreams and destroy our vision, that we will start going into prayer and praise and get serious about it. Mm. Serious. Mm. That we praise our way out of it. Mm. We let our petitions be known to God. Yes. We go boldly to that throne of God. And then, suddenly, yes. Our earthquake come. It might not be a physical earthquake, but it might be something that shakes us to our bones. Shake our faulty belief system. Shake us to the point that we know in our knower that these dreams and visions are going to happen. And they will happen. We just got to keep the faith, keep them always before us. Write them down. Let them be known. Keep confessing. And they will come about. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you do speak to us through dreams and visions. And you do put dreams and visions in our heart. But Father, we know that Satan has come as a thief to kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to rob us of our visions and our dreams. He wants to extinguish them from our minds and our hearts. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Father, I speak this right now in the name of Jesus. 
Keep those visions and dreams alive in us. Father, let our lips sing praises unto you. Father, that we can come boldly to your throne. Through the throne of grace and receive mercy. Father, we thank you that we can come to the expectation yes. with a joy, mm -hmm. with that hope that all our visions and dreams will come about when we trust in you with our whole heart. Yes. We ask this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen.